I want to wade again into a controversial era, area with a hot button issue that is dominating the news on court dockets, in government halls, and I suspect it will come soon to the church. But I want to talk about what must the church do about same-sex marriage. I talked about it this morning in the 7.30 worship, what must the church say about same-sex marriage? And the church must not just say something about it. We have a responsibility to do something about it. For we are not just hearers of the word, but we are to be doers as well. What must the church do about this business of same-sex marriage? Uh, don't blush at what I'm about to say, but I have been, and perhaps the moniker is true, I have been named intolerant and homophobic, too rigid and too dogmatic, harsh and too stern by people, I suspect, who can't stand up under truth. I will admit that there have been times that I could have said things differently and hopefully with your prayers the spirit will temper my speech so that I don't be offensive in a hurtful way but if the truth offends I can't take it back I am undeniably Christian a preacher of the gospel. And as a preacher of the gospel, I've got to tell the truth even when it strikes me. There are gays in my family, my blood relations are gay. But I can't not preach the text because I don't want to offend my family. I wish I had a witness here. <laughs> Sex between a man and a man is unnatural. <laughs> Sexual relations between two women is unnatural. It violates not only natural law, but the righteous laws of God and the, 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 the feminist radical gay and lesbian movement making a whole lot of noise but only 2% of the population are gay. 98% of the country is heterosexual but the 2% dominate the conversation. They set the agenda because the church is singing and shouting while members of our family are on their way to hell. See how quiet you got right there? It was worse than that at 7.30. We are trying to come up with moral and political solutions to a spiritual dilemma. The situation is not moral because morals can be relative. The situation is not political because it could be on the right or the left side of the aisle. It is an issue against the sovereignty of God because same-sex marriage, believe it or not, is not about marriage. 
It's about destroying what God calls family. A family is a man and a woman with their children. Um, now listen, all of us can stand a healthy dose of tolerance. But tolerance must not come at the expense of truth. Because tolerance today, in these times, in this culture, demands an affirmation of virtually all kinds of behavior, no matter how immoral, unnatural, or bizarre. Now, if, if you're going to if you're going to have same-sex marriage, if you're going to have two men marrying or two women marrying, why not three men marrying? I mean, just go all the way. Or, or, or one man marrying four women. Or four women marrying two men. Why not just go to bestiality and marry a lamb or, or a goat? And have sex with a dog or... Uh, 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 a mountain lion just go all the way to the extreme because one behavior is just as sick as the other <laughs> all unrighteousness is sin and listen I think that the church makes the mistake when we get in the argument against same sex marriage, we make the mistake of making noise when there is sin in the church that we don't address. Premarital sex is sin also. Talk back to me if you can. Adultery is sin, gossip is sin. Shacking up is sin. And if the church does not talk about that, then we got to shut up about same-sex marriage. It's not right for you to go to bed with another woman's husband. It is not right for you to live together out of the bounds of matrimony. Amen. It is not right for a husband to beat up his wife. That goes on in the church and we don't address it. But if we don't address those ills, we have to hush when it comes to same-sex marriage. Because in the sight of God, same-sex marriage is the same sin as adultery. It's the same sin as lying. Talk back to me if you can. And if we're going to tolerate those sins, then we've got to tolerate same-sex sins. Yeah. You, you, you would be shocked to know that in October of 2008, a first-grade class in San Francisco, California, took a field trip to City Hall to celebrate the wedding of their lesbian teacher, to another woman. Earlier that same year, 2008, a federal appeals court in Massachusetts said a local school district was well within its bounds to allow second graders to read about homosexual marriage. My two dads. Can you imagine how psychologically messed up those children must be? To think that it is right for two men to raise a child. I wish I had a witness here. If you're going to violate natural laws to do what you want to do, and, and uh, you know, I'm not bothering nobody, it's my business, I can do what I want to do. I don't think it's a violation of natural law. That's your opinion. That's what, that's what you say God says, but I don't think it violates natural law. That's not what the Bible meant. That was in the Old Testament. 
And that doesn't have anything to do with us now in the New Testament. Well, in Romans chapter 1, uh, uh, Paul says, if you don't change your behavior, God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. Uh, the illustration I used this morning is uh, people saying nothing's wrong with it and I'm doing what I want to do. It's my thing. You do what you want to do. And uh, people of the church, uh, people of the church say, well, uh, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't go along with it, but uh, it's not bothering me. Uh, I'm, I'm at home with my wife and my family, and I can't tell consenting adults what to do behind closed doors. It doesn't affect me, so I just let them do what they want to do. I don't think it's right, but I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm going to let God judge them. That would be a good argument if it were not for the argument I'm about to make. Um, if you're in a boat with somebody, and uh, that person is on his side of the boat, and he decides that he has a right to drill a hole in the boat. And you tell him, man, what you doing? You, what are you trying to do? He said, you stay on your side of the boat. Uh, you with your wife and your children, and I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm doing what I want to do. What I'm doing is not bothering you. I have a right to do what I'm doing. But eventually, everybody's going to drown. Because what happens in one section of society affects all of us in every section of society because sin, when it is not exposed, destroys. Um, again, same-sex marriage is not about marriage. It's about the devil trying to destroy the Christian idea of what the family is all about. Now you might want to know how we got here. I think we got here with the sexual revolution of the 1960s. The invention of the birth control pill. Where free sex was available to anybody without consequence. Oh, the hippies and the, and the, and the sexual revolution of the 1960s and then no fault divorce when you can get out of a marriage because of irreconcilable differences uh, we just can't get along or you decide you're going to shack up to decide if you eventually want to get married talk back to me if you can and so these ills of society brought about by the sexual revolution of the 1960s has spawned this movement where everybody now has rights. The same sex marriage agenda is not about civil rights. It's not a civil rights issue. I, I'm offended that they tack same-sex marriage on to civil rights. Uh, because blacks going in the back door was a civil rights issue. And it had nothing to do with sexual orientation. It had to do with color of the skin. I wish I had somebody to help me here. And when you trivialize what they went through in the 50s and the 60s with what you want to do, that is sin. Another argument is uh, they were born that way. Uh, that, that's the school of thought uh, that says homosexuality and lesbianism and being gay is a choice. And then there's a school that says it is a biological disposition. Some people say it's a choice. You choose to be gay. Others say it's a biological disposition. You were born that way. Well, I say the power of God is over all of it. God's power is over your choice and your biological disposition. If you choose it, you cannot choose it. And if you're born that way, you can be born again. Well, I wish I had a witness here. 
is a way that seems right. But the end thereof are ways of death. Uh, brothers and sisters, there's something wrong with a man holding another man's hand. You might as well get with me because it ain't going to get no better. There's something wrong with a woman having sexual affection for another woman. I wish I had a witness here. I'm, I'm trying to be as antiseptic as I possibly can. I'm trying to disinfect this sermon as much as I can. But the truth is, men and women go together anatomically. Men and women fit together physiologically for the pleasure of the sex act. Let me, let me see if I can drive this point home. I, I came to church this morning. Uh, I came to church this morning in my, in my white car. And when I got out of the car, um, I usually could just put my hand on the, on the door uh, handle and just touch it and the door locks. You know, that's how you handle an S63. Uh, 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 AMG. Uh, Mercedes Benz. With a diamond in the back. And a sunroof top. Digging in the scene. With a gangster. <laughs> But I touched the handle and it wouldn't, it wouldn't lock. And on my instrument cluster, uh, the, the other day it said that the, the cell was weak in the battery uh, in, my, in my key. And so I thought that it was something wrong with my key and I made a note uh, on my phone to call Mercedes tomorrow. Uh, to order me another key or order another battery because the battery was low causing my key not to act right because if I keep it on my person I don't have to have it in my hand I can just touch the door and it opens it locks and it unlocks and this morning it wouldn't do it and I thought it was because of the, uh, the battery being weak in the phone it, it was not until I went home and and changed shirts that I recognized that I picked up the wrong key because the key to my white car looks just like the key to my black car. They have different key rings on them for me to differentiate them. But I wasn't paying attention and I picked up the wrong key and tried to unlock one car with the wrong key. That's something like this same sex stuff. That's trying to unlock something with the wrong key. Because there's nothing that satisfies a woman like a man. And there's nothing that satisfies a man like a woman. For a man to try to sexually satisfy a man is trying to open a lock with the wrong key. Am I doing all right? I said, I said this morning and the brother shouted when I said this this morning so I'm going to say it again. If God made anything better than a woman he kept it for himself. Men and women is God's design. Ellen DeGeneres, notwithstanding. Rosie O'Donnell, notwithstanding. Our own mayor in Houston, notwithstanding. Same-sex unions or marriages is against God's natural order. And the church 
has got to take a side. The church has got to decide where she's going to stand. If you're going to stand with the politicians, then quit preaching. But if you're on the Lord's side, you got to cry loud and spare not because this kind of preaching is not popular. I don't expect to be invited to the male's Christmas social. But I'm not a politician, I'm a prophet. I have in my mouth the word of God because somebody here may be struggling with who and what you are. I've come to tell you, you are made in the image of God. He made you male or female. There are schools in Houston, high schools in Houston where gay and lesbian clubs are allowed to meet so that youngsters can experiment with their sexuality. They can decide if they want to be Jane and Jane rather than Jane and John. I mentioned in the early service, and some of you may still remember Sister Gladys Clark, who sleeps the long sleep. Uh, Sister Gladys Clark was a strong member of this church, funny. She would say all kinds of funny things. She was just a wonderful, sweet person to be around. And uh, when my daughter was two or three years old, she used to hold hands with Dr. Terry Newman's little son, and they would walk through Sunday school holding hands. And I'd say, girl, turn that boy's hand loose. You ain't got no boyfriend right now. You're just three years old. Sister Gladys Clark said, shut up, Rev. Let that girl hold that boy's hand. <laughs> boys and girls need to hold hands. She said, you start crying if she hold another little girl's hand. Somebody ought to help me talk here. You see, sin is missing the mark. But if you miss the mark, at least aim at the right target. Somebody going to get that on the way to Papa Doe. I said sin is missing the mark but I don't want to miss the mark aiming at the wrong target y'all gonna make me say it ain't you all right I'm gonna say it okay y'all gonna make me say it huh all right I'm gonna say it if you hear that Reverend Anderson was looking at some woman you say yeah he did it Yeah, I'm, I'm praying for him. He's, he's struggling with that. You keep him in prayer. But if you hear that Reverend Anderson looking at some man, you tell him, now that's a lie. Now he ain't no good, but I know he ain't doing that. Because he is USDA prime, 100% all man. who loves women. I'm with Solomon about that. Solomon said her lips are like threads of scarlet. Her cheeks are like pomegranates. Her neck is like the Tower of David built it for an armory. Her breasts are like two twin rows feeding among the lilies. I like that kind of talk. And if, if, if I miss the mark, pray for me, but at least I'm aiming at the right target. The wages of sin is death. Death to the family. Death to society. Death at the church when there is no mention of what the devil is trying to do with this issue. So, as I hurry, what must the church do? I've told you what the church has got to say. Now let me tell you what the church has got to do. The church has got to strengthen the family. 
when, when the homosexual community looks at the divorce rate of Christian heterosexual couples, we got to be quiet because we can't brag on you ought not have same-sex relationships when you can't stay in a heterosexual one. I'm talking about me and everybody in here who is divorced. We need to recognize that we've got to strengthen the family so that your child will not be vulnerable to another man or another woman. Especially if you have children, you can't bring no man in that house over your children. Because not only will he mess with your little girl, now you got to be watching your little boys. Talk back to me if you can. Divorce is permitted by God when there is adultery on one part or the other. But divorce because of irreconcilable differences is a convenient way for you to do what you want to do. And if you are God's child, you can't do what you want to do. You got to do what God says to do because the family suffers. Divorce is, a, is an ugly tear. It's a ragged rip of the relationship that destroys not only the two divorced, but you got children involved. And then you wonder why they crazy and messed up because you destroyed the family. You ruined the family because of your selfishness. Listen, when you got a family, when you got children, your needs got to be put on the side. It, it, ain't, it ain't no time for you to be experimenting when you got a family. It's no time for you to be trying to find yourself when you got children. You should have found yourself in college. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the Word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021. Or feel free to visit our website at www.lilygrove.org. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy.